good evening and welcome to the Federation's 2019 annual meeting. I'm Renee Gordon. And I'm her husband, Rob. <laughs> We're thrilled to be the chairs of tonight's event. The annual meeting gives us an opportunity to celebrate the incredible impact you and Federation have made on our Jewish community, both locally and globally. And I'm proud to say it's quite an impact. I want to take a minute to acknowledge two key Federation leaders in our midst. Ira Gerstein, board chair, whom we'll hear from in a few moments, and Michael Hoffman, president and CEO. And we have several representatives from our partner agencies with us tonight. We want to thank them for everything they do on a daily basis to connect people to Jewish life. Last week, we lost one of our most devoted philanthropists and visionary leaders, Barbara Kay. Barbara was considered one of the matriarchs of the Jewish Federation of Palm Beach County and the Palm Beach Jewish community. Please look at the screens as we remember Barbara and some of the individuals that we've lost in the past year. They all made a profound impact in the greater Palm Beaches, laying the foundation of what we are and what we can become. Please join me in a moment of silence. May all of their memories be for a blessing. Now, before we step down from the podium, I just wanted to say how honored we are to be having tonight's annual meeting at Temple Emmanuel, which is our synagogue. My four-year tenure as our temple president ended just a few days ago, so it is especially meaningful for me that we were all here tonight. Thank you to the synagogue for hosting us this evening. A special thank you goes out to our rabbi, Rabbi Michael Resnick, whom I'd like to welcome to the stage for a Devar Torah. Rabbi? Hi, everybody. Welcome to Temple Emmanuel. We're honored that you're here tonight. I want to tell you a very quick story from Pesikta Rabati, a Midrash source about a man who, a Jewish man, a farmer, who had a cow. And he had this cow, and the cow worked for him and plowed his field, except on Saturdays, because it was Shabbos, and he gave the cow the day off. At some point, he began to run into some financial uh, difficulties, and he was forced to sell his cow. And he sold it to a non-Jewish farmer down the road. A week goes by, and then, lo and behold, on Shabbat, the following Shabbat, up comes the farmer, the non-Jewish farmer, and he's yelling and screaming about his cow that refuses to work on the Sabbath. He says, they won't do anything. He just sits in the field and will not move. So the Jewish farmer follows him to the field, and he walks up to the cow, and he says, Bubala. I'm adding a little bit here. It doesn't say Bubala in the, uh, in the Midrash. He goes, Bubala. Listen, I always gave you Shabbat off. It was a day of rest. But you don't work for me anymore, sweetheart. You know, you work for him now, and you have to work on, the Saturday, on Saturday, on Shabbat. So please, if you don't mind, get up and work. The cow stands up and begins to plow the field. The man is amazed, and he's like, what did you do, bewitch her? No, I just told her that it's not Shabbat for her working with you, and that's the way it is. So he says, the non-Jewish farmer, wow, if a cow without the ability to think and reason, can sanctify time, can find the beauty and find purpose in its life, then call the Homer, how much more should I, you know, with the ability to think and reason, made in the image of God, be able to go ahead and, and find and sanctify life like this cow? So what does he do? He converts to Judaism, he studies Torah, and he's given the name Yochanan ben Torta. Yochanan, the son of the cow. <laughs> That's the end of the story. Thanks very much. See you. <laughs> so to make it really short, though, purpose is really clear for the rabbis, that if a cow could find purpose in its life, if a cow could sanctify something, 
And the rabbis are very fond of putting animals in that position. The first prayer we say in the morning is, you know, thank you, God, for allowing the rooster to know the difference between day and night. If a dumb chicken can know the difference between day and night, then how much more so a human being? And if a cow could know and sanctify parts of life, then so can we, even more so. And that's the reason we're here. Because we, as thinking, capable human beings, can go ahead and affect change. We can make things happen. And the cow changed the life of this man, and we, with so many more resources, emotional and otherwise, ethical and otherwise, can change things as well. And the work that we do and the lives that we touch can be transformative. And it's not just within the context of being in this room, it's in our individual lives that we live each and every day as Jews that can touch and, and influence and make a difference in the lives of everyone we meet. And that's the story of Yochanan, the son of the cow. And God willing, it should be our story as well. May we go out, may we continue to touch lives, may we continue to make a difference. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Ira Gerstein, the board chair of our Jewish Federation here in Palm Beach County. I want to just take a moment to say something about Barbara Kay. Barbara was a visionary leader, and she was the first person who welcomed me when I got involved with our Federation. She was the first person that reached out to me and gave me advice when I became chair elect. And she was the first person I could call on for guidance and counsel on key community issues. She truly represented the expressions of Sadiq and of Chesed, righteous, kind, giving. She will be doing this. Barbara would be thrilled to know that we're all here tonight to celebrate what has been a great year for our Federation and this community. I am proud to announce that the Chamber of Commerce of the Palm Beaches named Federation the 2019 Health and Human Services Organization for the year. This is an honor. This is an honor for everyone at Federation, especially our dedicated leaders. Please join me in recognizing and thanking Federation and their hardworking board of directors and committee members. I particularly want to acknowledge Federation's committee chairs who complete their service this evening. Please hold your applause. Barry Berg, Andrew Commodore, Steve Ellison, Lynn Caston, Mark Levy, Arthur Loring, Bill Meyer, Cindy Schlossberg, Brian Seymour, and Stephen Sussman. Thank you for your commitment and leadership. We have a gift of appreciation for you, which is on the table behind us, which you'll pick up at the end of the evening. In the spirit, in the spirit of always having an, a succession plan that builds for tomorrow's success, I would like to congratulate and welcome Hope Silverman as our board chair elect. Two thousand and nineteen has been a year of unprecedented impact and growth for our Federation. This could not have been accomplished without the energy, creativity, and commitment. Did you write these lines? Of our president and CEO, Michael Hoffman. This year, Michael and I worked with the Board of Directors and senior professionals to create Federation's new vision statement. I'd like to share it with you now. Here we go, it's on the board. Developing the human and financial resources necessary to ensure a vibrant Jewish future. 
we can see the momentum towards realizing this vision in several key accomplishments this year. These ac accomplishments reinforce Federation's role as the City Hall of our Jewish community. We work closely with our partners at the Mandel JCC, at Meyer Prep, at Albert Jewish Family Services, to strengthen those agencies by providing strategic guidance, financial support, and human capital. Federation's oversight of the JCC has strengthened the agency's financial position and created the structure for a new board of directors and board of trustees. We welcome all of the new JCC leaders to their positions. I also want to welcome JCC's new board chair, Barry Berg, and CEO Jesse Rosen to their new positions. Barry and Jesse will work with the leaders and professionals to continue to implement the JCC's strategic plan and achieve its goals and objectives. I also want to acknowledge Roz Leopold and as board chair at the Meyer Prep and my, Michael Lampert as Alpert Jewish Family Services. Federation is looking forward to continuing to work closer, closely with you and your respective agencies as you grow, change, and succeed. Growth and challenge are key themes that emerged from the landmark Jewish Community Study that Federation completed this year. The study offers a clear picture of who we are as our community and provides directions for where we have to go. Later tonight, we'll be hearing some of the results that we, that we will drive, how we make our decisions that will help determine strategic priorities and allocate resources over the next decade. One of the factors that the study revealed is that safety and security are top priorities in our community. Federation is dedicated to ensuring a safe, secure Jewish community by providing agencies and synagogues with resources, training, and support. The study also showed that the majority of our community is committed to supporting Jewish causes. This is why fundraising is a core priority of our Federation. We are embarking on a new fundraising model which integrates all sources of revenue including annual campaign, designated giving, agency fundraising, legacy giving, and corporate sponsorships. With this model, Federation serves as the community center of Jewish philanthropy and ensures us to provide comprehensive philanthropic advice to our donors. The annual campaign is the top fundraising priority. And I'm proud to say with, with six weeks until the close of the campaign, today we are at $16 million, which is 90%, 99% of our $16.2 million goal. This is a tremendous accomplishment and this early at this early point in the calendar year. And I have full confidence that we will reach our goal and exceed it. I want to acknowledge our campaign ambassadors and professionals, all under the leadership of Matt Kernkraut and Federation's Chief Development Officer. I want to also note that our Jewish Community Foundation is now at $100 million in its endowment under management at Federation, and it's growing to ensure our community will thrive for the future generations. I'd like to recognize the incredible achievements of our campaign leadership, Joel Judenfriend, Annual Campaign Chair, Cindy Schlossberg, Women's Philanthropy Campaign Chair, Bill and Richie Commodore from the Community Foundation, our Jewish Community Foundation Board. This year we, we completed the integration of the Friedman Commission for Jewish Education, or CJE, and Federations into Federation's Department of Education. The synergy of Federation and the CJE will ensure that the future success of signature educational programs like PJ Library 
and Melton Adult Learning. I want to thank CJE's leadership. Debbie Shapiro, Chair of the CJE's, there you are, Debbie. Magic. <laughs> Just like magic. You didn't see me slip up. And also to Federation's Chief Learning Officer, Bezad Dejani. Please join me in welcoming Debbie to the stage and to present the CJE Awards. Hi, everybody. I'm Debbie Shapiro, and I am the chair of the advisory council for the Friedman CJE. And I, I'd like to say I've been involved with CJE for many, many years. And prior to this, I was president two times. And the last time I was on this stage for the annual meeting at Emmanuel, I was on crutches and a boot, and I still delivered my notes. So I, I want to say that I have a lot of experience, so please believe me when I say that the integration between Federation and CJE has gone so well and so beautifully, and I'd really like to thank Michael and Ira and everybody who was involved in that. And I, it was the right time with the right people, and I appreciate it very much. It makes me very excited for the future. And CJE offers cutting edge, innovative programming and collaborates with all of our synagogues and Jewish organizations to enhance their ability to serve the community. And actually, for, it, for those of you who don't know the Alphabet Soup, we're the Commission for Jewish Education. And even with the integration, we've retained our own um, nomenclature. So it, it's helping with, our, with the integration and the people that we've built relationships with for so long still know us as that entity. CJE provides relevant, powerful Jewish learning experiences for children, families, educators, adults, and people with special needs. And it's through these experiences that we're strengthening our community's future with deepened connections to Jewish values and identity. At the end of every season, CJE presents awards to talented and deserving educators. I'm going to present first the Grinspoon Award for Excellence in Jewish Education. And I'd like to send congratulations to Shikma Araki Cohen from the Arthur I. Meyer Jewish Preparatory School. Did she stand up? Is she here? There she is. I want to say Mazel Tov, Chikma, for doing being such an excellent educator and leader. Thank so you. just stay up with me for a minute. And now I'd like to present the Hadish Award for Innovation in Teaching and Learning. And the recipient is the Cohen Family Innovation Lab. So it's it's not a person, but it's this lab at Meyer Prep. Okay. But we have a person coming up, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about it first. The Cohen Family Innovation Lab provides a state-of-the-art design curriculum that inspires inquiry and creativity. The lab challenges students to take what they've learned in math, science, humanities, and literature and apply them using the latest technologies. These experiences foster entrepreneurship and innovation where students give life, shape, and purpose to their ideas. And here tonight to accept the award on behalf of Meyer Prep are, is Kelsey Gufanti. Right. <laughs> is Beth here as well? No, yeah. Beth, yeah. And, and also Beth Spear, if you don't mind standing up also, to be recognized. Thank you. So, Mazatov to everybody, and thank you, thank you. you seated. And I want to. Thank you all for your leadership and commitment to powerful Jewish learning in the Palm Beaches. And I look forward to all of us working together in the future to continue the gold standard for Jewish education that we have achieved. Thank you, Debbie. 2019 
marks 10 years since the founding of the Emerging Leadership Program, ELP. ELP is a transformative program that prepares the future leaders of our community. Through the Mandel Center for Leadership Development, 120 young leaders have participated in ELP in the past 10 years. Two years ago, I spent a Sunday morning with 20 of these young leaders, and the conversation really made an impression on me. We spoke about leadership, community, and the role we all have in creating our Jewish future. I was deeply impressed and inspired by these, and inspired by these young leaders. The participants of the LP program make me very optimistic about the future of our community. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Kevin Shapiro, Pam Commodore, Courtney Damry, and Jason Rogers. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Kevin Shapiro. I'm proud to be an alumnus of Cohort 2, and I'm the immediate past chair of ELP, which is the Emerging Leadership Program. This amazing program was started in 2009 when a group of visionaries decided they couldn't be the only ones who wanted to learn how to be Jewish leaders. With the support of the Mandel Center and a few local movers and shakers, ELP was born. Ten years later, the program continues to grow, thrive, and evolve. So what does 10 years mean for ELP? It means 120 graduates, many of whom now serve in leadership roles for federation, synagogues, and other Jewish community organizations. It means we're creating leaders out of individuals who are new to our area, as well as those who are making the choice to come back to our community. It means my fellow alumni and I are leading our Jewish community into the future. My name is Pam Commodore, and I'm a graduate of ELP Cohort 6. As Kevin said, ELP alumni go on to serve in various leadership roles in the Jewish community, and I'm proof positive. I'm a Federation's Human Resources Committee, and I'm a past chair of the PTO at the Mendel Jewish Community Center in Palm Beach Gardens. ELP is all about our personal commitment, our Jewish values, and why we should be leaders within the Federation and the Jewish community. The experience made me take more hands-on. I've taken a more directive look at my leadership and where I can have the most impact. Program participants become immersed in Jewish life, focus on personal development, and build connections with one another. When I was in ELP, we had access to top professionals and lay leaders. We also met with board members, local synagogue clergy, and partner agency executives, as well as renowned thought leaders from throughout the Jewish world. I especially love that the alumni network is intertwined with the current cohort. We're not segmented into different classes. We're all simply ELP. Hi, I'm Courtney Demery, and I am a current member of the ELP class this year. Let's hear it for cohort seven. My story is a little bit different in that I didn't grow up in Palm Beach County Jewish community. In fact, my husband Yanir and I just moved here from New York City about six months ago. I had a friend who was in cohort six. ELP and she told me about the program and it really spoke to me. So I went for the interview and I'm now a part of this amazing program. I'm excited about beginning my own leadership journey so that I can grow my inner circle and my community. For me, it's not about networking, but about being around like-minded people who want to change the future of our Jewish community. I love the idea of building genuine connections with my peers, meaningful connections, so that as a group and as individuals, we can make a difference. Hello, my name is Jason Rogers. I'm here representing Cohort 4. Uh, I'm also the current chair of ELP. Uh, tonight you've seen the impact of this amazing program. Uh, you've seen the photos, you've heard the words of my peers. I want to take a second to acknowledge Lindsay Hirsch, 
uh, who has made ELP into the life-changing experience it is today. We are constantly evolving ELP to keep up with trends, to offer more travel opportunities, and to meet the needs of our Jewish community. This program is making local young leaders take notice. They're seeing results and realizing they want to be part of it. Last year, we had 37 nominations. This year, we had 68 for only 18 spots. Today, ELP is not the same as it was 10 years ago, and in 10 years, it won't be the same as it is today. Tonight, we'll install four ELP alumni to Federation's Board of Directors. In 10 years, the sky's the limit. Our future is unbelievably bright. I invite all ELP participants and alumni who are here tonight to please stand, and their names are listed in your program. <laughs> to everyone else, look around. These are the people who are going to be, or already are, on the boards of federation, synagogues, and Jewish community organizations. They're today's leaders and those of the future. Thank you. What an incredible presentation. Uh, my name is Jonathan Chain, and I was in the first cohort of ELP almost, well, it was 10 years ago. Uh, I guess you could say I've come full circle. I'm now the co-chair of the first cohort of the Mandel Leadership Institute, or MLI, along with Stacey Ellison. MLI is a new community leadership development program for individuals who demonstrate the propensity and desire for high caliber training in advanced Jewish leadership. MLI is for individuals with leadership experience who are currently serving at a synagogue, Jewish, organi uh, Jewish organization, partner agency, or federation, and have the potential to serve in a senior leadership role. In fact, two of our MLI participants will be president of their respective synagogues within the next few years, and that's just the beginning. At this time, please turn your attention to the screens to learn more about the impact this program has made on all of us. MLI is a new dynamic leadership program in the Mandel Center. It is a three-pronged system that brings together Jewish education, leadership development, and case study. And what's so exciting about it is that we're one of 10 communities in the entire country who has this program. MLI provides an opportunity for other members of the community to become better equipped to serve on their respective boards, whether it's in a congregation, whether it's the Federation, or other organizations in, in the community. The reason that I felt it was important is because it is training leadership and I feel like that's really one of the most important things and where we start with every organization. MLI really matters because we see a gap in the leadership journey and so we want to make sure that all of our leaders in the community have the training, the skills, the knowledge, the camaraderie that they need in order to move forward in their journey. I think it's a natural fit, it's like glove and hand because the skills that we learn here are so directly, practically applied, uh, given that we practice them in the sessions, through the case studies. And talking amongst ourselves and learning from others how they would handle a situation or a challenge is a big benefit of the class. Every single time, several of us in the room are saying, yeah, we've had that happen, and whoa, can you believe it, and how did you handle it, how did you handle that? What can we do better? Look, we have a great cohort of people that we're all bouncing ideas off of, learning from each other's respective experiences in the community, and that's um, been really beneficial. Just because you feel like you've seen it all, you know you haven't uh, when you get in a room with other uh, lay leaders who are serving our community. When we have individuals from around the community around one table, we're able to have conversations that are authentic, that are real, 
and that are happening. We're not saying, well, hypothetically, if someone had a seat at the table, MLI is bringing everyone to the table. I think it's great. I mean, I, I enjoy all the people that have decided to become a part of this. Even though we're all from different organizations, we all have the same goals. Whether it's the Federation, your synagogue, or other organizations in the community, we all have the same challenges, and that's training our lay leaders in order to be effective uh, members of our community. The skills that we learn here are tailor-made to be practical applied and directly applied in our work at our organizations so for me I've already taken lessons that I've learned here and applied them to things that I'm doing in my board service at Temple Emmanuel. I would definitely recommend it. It's been a really good learning experience for me personally. I do see in my day-to-day -day life things will come up and it'll kind of spark something that we did talk about or a case study that we reviewed. So it's usable information that you can make use of, you know, every day, whether it's in your leadership role or just in life. Many of us are asked to serve in respective ways in our community, but we go into these roles without really knowing how to serve. And MLI provides us with the tools in order to be as effective as possible right out of the box. So being part of this first group and seeing how it's working and knowing how great an opportunity it's going to be for future uh, lay leaders in our community is, is really exciting. Now you've had an opportunity to see for yourself what, jo what Jonathan and I have experienced as part of the inaugural cohort of MOI. I'm so proud to be a part of this amazing group. I'd like to ask my fellow MLI participants to stand and be recognized for completing the program. Their names are on the screens behind me as well as in the programs. You may be seated. Thank you for celebrating this achievement with us. For months, Federation has been telling us that we're going to hear tonight about its Jewish community study. The time has come. Please welcome to the podium, Jim Baldinger and Allison Seligman. So good evening. So all of us are here tonight to take the first step to start building the future of our Jewish Palm Beach community. I'm Jim Baldinger, I'm the chair of our uh, Jewish Community Study Task Force. And hello, I'm Allison Seligman, I'm vice chair of the task force. So what is this study? Well, Jewish Federation of Palm Beach County wants to know what today's Jewish community looks like and what our future could look like. So in 2018, uh, our federation worked with the Cohen Center at Brandeis University. They're one of the leading research entities in the country, and we launched this study. We conducted the study together at the same time with Federation of South Palm Beach County, and that gave us a full picture of the entire county. I think it also got us a better deal. Um, <laughs> True story. And tonight we are pleased and very excited to unveil the most important and exciting facts and figures and the insight we're getting from what we know is a groundbreaking study. The results will guide Federation, our synagogues, our Jewish agencies, community philanthropists, and the rest of our community well into the future. The results will guide and the data will guide all of us. It's available for, our, like we said, our agencies, our synagogues, our Federation, for everyone to use in order to make our community as vibrant as possible. So a little bit about us uh, and our backgrounds. I've been here, lived and worked in the Palm Beaches for 25 years. We raised three amazing daughters here. They all went to JCC preschool and Meyer Prep, wasn't Meyer Prep then, but Meyer, uh, and, and then local uh, Palm Beach County public schools. And my entire family at different times has worked on lots of different agencies and leadership roles, both here and nationally uh, in the Jewish community. And I have lived here since 2005. My husband, Adam, is a native Floridian, and I moved to Florida when I was 12. We're raising our two children, Sarah and Evan, here in the Palm Beaches, and I own two small businesses. Just like Jim, we're also involved with Federation in addition to several other Jewish organizations. And like you, Jim and I are very, both, very much invested in the Palm Beaches as individuals, as parents, as business people, and as Jews. Okay, so let's, since this is about a community study, let's do a little, little survey in the room. Raise your hand if you've lived in this community for five years, for at least five years. 
How about 10 years? Okay, how about 15? Okay. <laughs> 15 and up. Okay. So I don't think it's a surprise to see that things have changed a lot around here. I mean, you can see the physical changes like buildings going up, construction, unfortunately a little bit more traffic, but the changes that are not as obvious will wind up impacting us the most. So that's why this study is so monumental. Uh, we got a lot of data, a lot of information that came out of this study. Tonight, we just want to highlight three of the bigger headlines for you. The first one we want to talk about is that our Jewish community in the Palm Beaches is, is incredibly unique. It's growing, it's diverse, it's multi-generational, and few communities anywhere can say that. And that growing diversity is bringing drastic changes for how people want to experience Jewish life. We're learning that people want to connect with their Jewish values, traditions, and identities, but the way that they are doing that and the way that they want to do that is changing. The third big headline we want to talk about is that there are thousands of economically insecure people in our Jewish community. A lot of us think about the Palm Beaches as a home to great prosperity and wealth, but we're seeing a huge jump in the number of vulnerable people at every age and every stage of life. So if we break all that down, here's what we know. Palm Beach County, in, in its entirety, is home to the fourth largest Jewish community in the country. Tonight, however, we're going to focus on just our focus area of our federation. So that's Boynton Beach, west to Wellington, and north past Jupiter and into Martin County. So just in our area, in our service area, some of the basic numbers. There's been a dramatic 21% increase in population since the last time we did one of these studies in 2005. And there are now about 167,000 people who identify themselves as Jewish within our service area. And they live in a total of over 78,000 households. So let's do another, another quick uh, poll in the room. How many people here live in Lake Worth or Boynton Beach? So it's great to see so many of you here, but compared to the, uh, the demographics in our community, there's an opportunity to bring more people into, into leadership from, from that part of our community. Actually, 45%, 46% of the Jews in our area are concentrated in Lake Worth and Boynton Beach. And that's a total of over 80,000 Jewish people living there which is bigger than the population of, the Jewish population of most major cities in North America. And I'm excited because now I get to do a poll. So, <laughs> how many people here live in either Palm Beach Gardens to Jupiter and north into Martin County? It's definitely a significant number. At the same time, our study, the study shows that 27% of the Jews in our area live there. That equals about 45,000 Jews. In fact, my husband and I moved to Palm Beach Gardens because of that growth. We wanted to raise our children near other Jewish families, and with all of the development happening there, we anticipate continued growth. So here's something we don't get to say very often. We are actually getting younger. Uh, or at least our community is getting younger. Uh, so the median age in our community since the last time we did one of these studies has dropped by 10 years, from 70 to 60 years old. That still put, makes us a little bit older than other Jewish communities of our size, but it's a lot closer to the average for communities uh, across the continent. It's definitely true that young people are flocking here. We now estimate that there are more than 22,000 children living in Jewish households. That's an astounding 88% increase since the last major community study was done in 2005. That means for the first time in the history of this community, we have a large growing and younger population coming of age than we've ever had before. So the challenge is, what are we going to do to make Jewish life attractive and relevant for those people, for that big, important segment of our community? Relevant for them as singles, as professionals, as couples, as families, and eventually as retirees. Maybe it's a thought-provoking speaker series, a family-friendly Hanukkah celebration, an opportunity for a new professional to connect with someone who's been here for a few years. So if we want kids to grow up here and then want to come back here after college, it's really going to be up to us to provide access to limitless Jewish experiences that are relevant and foster connections with their Jewish values and, and identity. 
So who makes up these young families that are increasingly calling our community home? Interestingly, among the children in Jewish households, we've learned that about 56% are being raised by interfaith families. That's a big number. It's something we felt anecdotally, but now we know for sure that more than half of the young families in this area are made up of at least one parent who is not Jewish. Okay, so speaking of the younger generation, let's talk for a minute about Jewish education. How many of you in this room participated in some kind of Jewish education as a child, whether it's preschool, day school, afternoon religious uh, classes, just about everybody? Well, the numbers today, unfortunately, are different. Uh, what we learned in our survey is that only about 7% of our local children are enrolled in Jewish preschool, and only about 11% of Jewish children are enrolled in any kind of Jewish education. So if our children aren't connected to their Jewish identities, we don't have a Jewish future ahead of us. And so starting now, we've got to make Jewish education relevant, practical, and compelling, and it's got to be a given for all of us in our families and for everyone here. Um, and a new generation is going to require us to come up with a new way of thinking about Jewish education. Absolutely. Anyone who wants their child to have a strong sense of Jewish identity should be able to easily find a place or way that aligns with their values, their identity, and their financial, financial situation. So this brings us to our next area of focus, people in need. It may come as a shock, but in one of the most prosperous communities in the country, thousands of people here are struggling to make ends meet. Many of the folks are not sure where their next meal is coming from. 20% of this Jewish community here describes themselves as just getting along, nearly poor, or poor. And here's a really important statistic. 6,000 households are seeking services from Jewish social service providers, but not receiving them. Right now, there are just not enough services to go around. Sadly, thousands of those people who are suffering difficult circumstances are Holocaust survivors. Um, within our community, we have about 12,000 Holocaust survivors, and 5,000 of them are living at or below the poverty level. And we can do better than that. Um, speaking of, of vulnerable communities, vulnerable people in our community, one third of Jewish households in our community have someone with a disability or a chronic health issue. And all in all, the number of vulnerable people in our community is growing. And you know, we all believe in the Jewish value of tikkun olam, which means repairing the world. And that's something that as Jewish leaders, we actively are dedicated to trying to uphold. But it's now more important than ever. So regardless of the challenges that are, that are faced by anybody in our Jewish community, we can work together to provide services that ensure the ability to live a life of independence and dignity for everyone. Okay, so we've talked about geography, age, education, financial struggles. What about actual connections to Jewish life? The study tells us that four in five adults locally consider Judaism to be part of their daily lives but how they connect to their Jewish identity, traditions, and holidays is a different story. They're connecting in non-traditional ways, like through conversations, through reading articles online, and participating in cultural, educational, and social activities. And great news, they're volunteering. Okay, so I get to do another, I didn't realize I'm doing I know, I know, he gets all I'm the polls. <laughs> Should have been more fair. All right, so raise your hand if you've participated in any kind of volunteer experience in the Jewish community in the last year. So that, wow. So that could be packing food for the needy, cleaning a beach, serving on a committee or a board. It's a big, big portion of the room. That's fantastic. And you're all in good company. And, and our community is pretty amazing in that way. More than a third of local Jewish adults volunteered in the month before taking the survey. And that's a great number. It's really impressive. Another surprising trend, not quite as, as positive, is that only about 15% of adults in our community are affiliated with a synagogue. That's much lower than the national average. So shifting gears now, here's an interesting note about what's on all of our minds. Survey respondents are telling us that they're increasingly interested in programs that empower them to stand up to hatred and bigotry. Raise your hand, I have to get a poll. Raise your hand <laughs> if you are more concerned about anti-Semitism than you were about one year ago. No surprise. About 68% of survey respondents are telling us 
They're very concerned about anti-Semitism nationally. And again, that number being 68% comparatively to the room that we just saw with our hands raised, it's worth noting that the study was conducted before the tragedies at Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh about a year ago and at the Chabad of Poway a little over two weeks ago. But concern isn't the same as fear. And to the contrary, what we've consistently seen in our community is thousands of people showing up for programs to be ambassadors against hatred and to stand up to anti-Semitism. So we've got to nurture that passion in this generation and in future generations. We've got to teach how to combat hatred with education and advocacy, and we need to build a community that's safe, welcoming, and has no place for anti-Semitism. So how does Israel figure into all of this? Our community appears to be overwhelmingly committed to the state of Israel. About 88% of Jewish adults say they feel connected to the Jewish state. But among 18 to 49 year olds, only 28% feel very connected to the land of Israel. By a show of hands, how many of you have been to Israel? Wow, that's wonderful. Around our community, the number is actually closer to 60% of local Jewish adults have been at least once. It's remarkable numbers that are far above the national average. So 60% visiting Israel is great, but the other side of that coin is an opportunity. 40% of people haven't been to Israel. And one of the main barriers to that is cost. It's just too expensive for a large portion of our community to make the trip to Israel. Um, all of us who've been there know that going to Israel isn't, it's more than just a vacation. Uh, it's, it's meaningful. It's about seeing and touching and feeling our Jewish homeland and we know that it's an experience that transforms people's Jewish lives and, and helps to anchor their Jewish identity for the rest of their lives. So if people here can't get there, what can we do to foster people's love of Israel that's really deeply rooted in our community's DNA? How can we help build upon their unique relationship with their Jewish state? Federation's new Israel Program Center is making an impact with programs last week like the Israel Independence Day 5K run and celebration. Hundreds of people attended, and I have to say, as someone who ran the 5K, sorry, I'm very excited. I love seeing new programs like that emerging in our community. We want every person who supports Israel and the Jewish people to feel proud to stand up for the causes that they are passionate about. So, after hearing everything that Jim and I have been sharing, we want to know what you are passionate about. So each of you has a booklet that was on your chair when you came in, and it's got more details about the community study. Certainly not all of the data that we collected, but, but a lot more of the, of, the, of the findings and some summaries of them. And we urge you to take it home with you, read through it carefully, and sit with it for a while, and think about how you can help Federation use this data, our whole community use this data, and what we can do together to build a stronger and more vibrant Jewish community for our future generations. Here's the thing. If anyone can make a change, it's the people in this room. Reach out to Jim and me. Reach out to Federation that you see here tonight, Federation staff that you see that you have a relationship with. We want to find out the causes that are most meaningful to you. We want to hear what your vision is for Jewish Palm Beach. Because it's going to take the collective energy and creativity of our entire community together to make our home a shining example of Jewish communities everywhere. Look how far we've come and what we have learned. Thank you for joining us to take this next step, and thank you for being part of the future of our Jewish community. Now, okay. now speaking of the future, we have some additional important business to get to, so we welcome Steve Ellison to the stage. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Allison. I'm Steve Ellison, and I'm on Federation's 2019 Nominating Committee. And in about one minute, I'll be the immediate past chair of the Human Resources Committee. <laughs> Unfortunately, Ray Golden, our Nominating Committee chair, is unable to be with us here tonight. So I'm delivering this report on his behalf. He didn't leave me with one of his great jokes, so I can't help you there. Uh, in many ways, Federation's Board of Directors guides not just Federation, but our entire Jewish community. Our leadership strives to have an inspired vision for our future 
and a commitment to work hard to implement that vision. We just heard great things about where we can go in the future and what we need to do to get there. I want to thank and, and recognize Ira, who's done a, an incredible job leading the executive committee and the board of directors. We're so fortunate that you'll be doing it for one more year. Now I'd like to ask the, yes, please. Now I'd like to ask the 2018-2019 executive committee to please stand and remain standing. And now I'd like to ask the 2018-2019 elected board of directors to please stand and remain standing. I hereby discharge you of your duties. Please join me in a round of applause for the hard work and dedication these leaders have devoted to our community. You may be seated. Under Ray Golden's, Golden's chairmanship, the nominating committee, whose names are on the screen behind me, has been at hard work these past few months. We have carefully selected a group of talented individuals as the 2019-2020 Executive Committee and Board of Directors. As provided by the Federation bylaws, the new officers, Executive Committee, and Board of Directors were elected earlier this evening at the Federation Board meeting. I'd like to welcome Rabbi Resnick back to the podium to install those individuals. Thank you, Steve. I was asked to give a Jewish message about uh, leadership. So I want to tell you a quick story about Moses. In the second chapter of Genesis, uh, there is the passage where Moses goes out among his people, goes to Goshen, sees the suffering of the Jews, and there's a passage where he sees a Jew being beaten by an Egyptian. And the Torah says, the Yifen Kobacho, he looks this way and that way, the Vayar the Aini Ki Enish, and he sees that there is nobody else there. And what does he do? He then Vayachet meets three, he he, he, you know, hits the Egyptian, kills the Egyptian. The rabbis hate this story, right? Because it makes Moses look like he's a sneaky little killer, you know, where he basically looks this way and that way and makes sure that no one's looking, and then only then does he do something. The rabbis say, don't look at it that way. Look at it this way. That he comes, he sees the Egyptian beating the Jew. He looks this way and that way. Bayar Kienish. And he sees a bunch of people standing around and no one's doing anything. No one ain't ish. No one's being a leader. No one's taking that step forward and doing what needs to be done. And then, only then, does he act. And from there, the Talmud goes on and says, In a place where no one's doing what needs to be done, you have to strive to do what needs to be done. If no one's being a mensch, you've got to be the mensch. The people I'm about to um, install are the mensches. They're the leaders. They're the ones who, in spite of having an opportunity, knowing what needs to be done, actually get up and talk the talk and walk the walk. A real quick story from my past. 25 years ago, I went to a meeting at B'nai Jeshurun in New York. And I forget what it was. I couldn't begin to tell you. And I had so many ideas. And I said, you know, we should do this. And we do need to do that. And we need to do this. And then after we were all done, I thought, what do I talk about? I don't have time for any of this. And so I didn't do anything. And then, year, you know, a couple weeks later, when I went back to the synagogue, one of the guys on committee looks at me and he says, in like a lion, out like a lamb. I never forgot that. Don't be a lamb. In like a lion, out like a lion. And that's what we have here. Lions who stand up, who put endless energy and effort into making this Jewish community what it is. So let's get on with the installation. I'd like to call your attention to the screens behind me. Well, the 2019, by the way, 
I'm only all lion now. No more lamb, okay? Just in case anyone was wondering. Will the 2019-2020 Executive Committee please stand and remain standing? Will the 2019-2020 elected Board of Directors, new and continuing, please stand and remain standing? Will the past Federation Board Chairs, Agency Board Chairs, and CEOs, all of whom are on the Federation Board, please stand and remain standing? I sincerely thank you for committing to lead our Federation and Jewish community. You have the responsibility to ensure Federation continues to impact the lives of Jewish people here, in Israel, and in 70 countries around the world. Our community has complete confidence in your leadership. It is my honor and privilege to install you as the 2019-2020 Board of Directors of the Jewish Federation of Palm Beach County. Mazal Tov, and together may we go from strength to strength. It's now my privilege to call up Federation CEO, Michael Hoffman. Thank you, Rabbi, and congratulations to our Board of Directors. Um, and I want to give a special thank you to uh, our board members who have just uh, stepped off as, as, as being a member of our board. Um, what an exciting night. Um, you've heard a lot about our future, our directions, um, our leadership opportunities, um, and really what's been the strength of our Palm Beach Jewish community. And it's an extraordinary opportunity to be able to stand here with you so we can to see how we're all contributing to make the Palm Beach Jewish community um, one of the best that it could possibly be in, in the entire country. I want to uh, thank Ira Gerstein, our board chair. Ira, thank you for your dedication, for your leadership, and for your friendship. Thank you. <laughs> this is an exciting time for our community and for our federation. Uh, I do want to uh, take a moment and share a few reflections on Barbara Kay, who has, you keep hearing, one of the most extraordinary leaders that this community has, has ever known. I've really only known Barbara for a couple of years since I've moved to since we moved to the Palm Beach Jewish community. But even in that short time, um, Barbara had a tremendous impact on me personally and professionally. She always expressed compassion, dedication, and vision for our community and for everything she did. And she approached everything with such a sincere amount of humility. It's just absolutely admirable. Barbara cared deeply about our Jewish community, but she had a particular passion for caring for the needs of our children and for our future. In Israel, she worked in partnership with the Joint Distribution Committee to support programs that help children at risk through nutritional enhancement. And here in Palm Beach, one of the many areas of philanthropy that she was able to participate in, her and her, her late husband, Jack Kay, uh, were the lead donors and supporters for the Barbara and Jack Kay Early Childhood Learning Center at the Mendel JCC. She was a longtime Federation leader, a past board chair, a past chair of women's philanthropy, and the recipient of, of the Jean Levy Award, which is Federation's highest honor. And she possessed a marketing savviness that was well before her times. While today we live in an environment where there is constant information, social media, instant messaging, and technology, Barbara really broke the mold on that about 40 years ago when she launched and started the, the Mosaic program, a Federation's weekly television show. And over the 40 years, Barbara has interviewed literally hundreds of luminaries from throughout the Jewish world. From global celebrities to, to local leaders, Barbara has brought Jewish issues to the forefront of, of our minds and in our living rooms and in our community. 
One of Barbara's greatest legacies is how she has instilled a level of commitment and leadership to her children, Susan, Nina, and David. Our thoughts are with Susan, Pertnoy, uh, Susan Shulman Pertnoy, who is a past president of the JCC and a current member of the Federation Executive Committee, uh, and her husband, Ronnie, and her siblings. Our thoughts and prayers are with him during this difficult time. Barbara was incredibly excited about the directions of our community and about our future. And as I was preparing for this evening, I was just really thinking about how this really has been the year of Federation, and this has been the year of Federation working in collaboration within our broader community to take advantage of all of these opportunities that you heard tonight. We went through an incredible metamorphosis in our Federation in so many ways. We repositioned and enhanced our Jewish Community Relations Council, which is serving as uh, the, the central point to build bridges with other faiths, to combat anti-Semitism and bigotry, and to serve as our lead advocate for the state of Israel. In the fall, we launched our Israel Program Center, which is a new and innovative initiative to find ways to bring Israel into our community. We relaunched our business and professional division, our BMP division, because the study has shown us that we have more professionals living in the community and calling the Palm Beaches home. We wanted to create opportunities for networking and engagement and to participate in leadership in our community. And one of our greatest priorities and successes has been the tremendous, tremendous success of the promotion of hands-on volunteerism in our community. And I'm so excited that this past year, more than 5,000 people participated in a hands-on volunteerism program through the Jewish Volunteer Center and the Ann and Sam Klein Literacy Program. The dedication of our volunteers is to be commended. If anyone participated, and you raised your hands before, in a hands-on volunteerism program, please stand so we can thank you. You can stand. The strength of our community is our volunteers and our leadership that is willing to give back to community in the ways that you all have just done. So we deeply appreciate your commitment to not just give with your philanthropy, but most importantly, to give with your hands and to give with, with uh, your hearts. We have such incredible momentum that I can't wait to see what's next for our Palm Beach Jewish community and our Jewish Federation. Of course, everything that has taken place um, we're able to accomplish this because our Jewish Federation has some of the hardest working professional staff in the Federation movement. I'd like to ask all Federation staff to please rise so we can thank you. These individuals are just inspiring to me. Um, they give their heart and soul and their blood, sweat, and tears to our community. It doesn't matter what the task is. And I find it an extraordinary privilege to be able to sit around the table with our, with our wonderful Federation staff and colleagues. We really have a Federation family, and I'm just privileged to uh, be able to come to work every single day and to see what they're able to accomplish, like the things that we've been able to see tonight. I also want to um, congratulate uh, some of our staff um, who are celebrating uh, significant service milestones at Federation. One of our strengths is our continuity uh, in people serving at the Federation. When I call your name, please rise. Julianne Kalea, 30 years. Seema Berkovich, 20 years. For 10 years, Chris Malone. Eric Perez, <laughs> Jessica Quassler, and Erica Simon. Thank you guys for your commitment, for your support, especially to the IT people, Eric and Chris, for helping me every single day. Because I'm technologically incompetent. So I haven't said yes before. Um, last year, Federation had the privilege uh, to award the first Debbie Rochefeld Professional Leadership Award. Debbie, who has been a longtime friend of mine, and I'm privileged to call her a colleague and a mentor, um, she has been instrumental in the success of our Jewish Federation here in Palm Beach, 
and she has dedicated her entire career to serving Jewish communities in North America. So I thought it was the only appropriate thing to do for our leadership that we recognize Debbie as she approached retirement and she started her phase down by naming an award in her honor, the Debbie Rochefort Professional Leadership Award. This award recognizes the outstanding achievements of a Federation professional who exemplifies Debbie's legacy of professional leadership, excellence, and commitment to enhancing our community. This award goes to the recipient with uh, the with this award, the, hello. <laughs> with this award, the recipient receives a generous stipend so they can participate in a professional development opportunity of their choice. For example, last year's recipient, Jeffrey Trins, participated in a seminar up at Harvard University, so he's much smarter now. <laughs> So I'm extremely proud to be presenting the 2019 Debbie Rochefort Professional Leadership Award to Josephine Gahn. <laughs> Joe, please come up. I also want to call up Debbie Rochefeld too. Where's Debbie? There you are. Come on. The Oscars. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wow. It's not just because her accent, although it helps. <laughs> so joined our Joe joined our federation about three years ago um, after a long career at the Jewish Federation of Springfield, Illinois. This past year. Uh, has been an especially successful year for Joe, as she has been, uh, since she's been promoted to the position of Vice President of the Jewish Community Relations Council. She has played a leadership role in strengthening our Federation's relationships with the greater Palm Beach community. We say often is that we will have a healthy and vibrant Palm Beach Jewish community if we're able to actively support the greater Palm Beach community, and Joe has played an essential role in that. She has um, applied her deep passion and commitment to the mission of the Federation and the Jewish Community Relations Council. Under Joe's steadfast leadership, she has created and stewarded a new strategic plan for the Jewish Community Relations Council. She has created an, a, a new board. There are four very, very active task forces and committees, all of whom are working hard to uh, fulfill the J JCRC's mission of strengthening advocacy, um, strengthening relations in the general community, building relationships with other faiths and ethnic groups, and advocating for Israel. I want to recognize and congratulate Joe on winning this award. It is well deserved. Joe, you exemplify what Debbie has exemplified her entire career of excellence, leadership, and commitment to the com to community. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, the words. Sorry, the words on here. I little guy in the cabinet. Right, in the cabinet. They told me before the awards and below here, I said, I'm not going to remember that. And I didn't. So, yeah. Oh, thank you. So, take a picture. Wait. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, now this is really the fun part. If it hasn't been fun before. So one final thing is we get to celebrate one of the most extraordinary women that I have ever had the privilege to uh, be in contact with, as have um, all of you, Dorothy Adler. Yeah. Dorothy truly is a matriarch of our Palm Beach Jewish community. And next week, she's turning 100 years old. Dorothy has seen literally the evolution of the world. Think about it. Technology, culture, politics, 
In fact, Dorothy was 29 years old when the State of Israel was founded. Let me say that again. She was 29 when the State of Israel was founded. <laughs> and with all these changes that you've heard about from the, from the community study, just think about all the changes that Dorothy has seen throughout her entire life since she was born back in 1919. She has been a constant pres presence in Federation in women's philanthropy. She was a winner of the prestigious Kipson, uh, uh, Kipnis Wilson Award, which is women's philanthropy highest honor. Um, she is a past campaign chair of the annual campaign for the Jewish Federation. And she was a fearless, fearless solicitor. In fact, she is never afraid to ask anyone for a gift anywhere at any time. So at one time, when Dorothy broke a bone and she was literally being um, rolled into surgery, she solicited her surgeon for a gift to the annual campaign. <laughs> if that's not dedication, what is? She was instrumental in building our foundation for Jewish learning in the Palm Beaches. Her major gift helped us launch the, the Commission for Jewish Education's PJ Library program 10 years ago, <laughs> which is now celebrating its 10th anniversary. And thanks to Dorothy's incredible vision and philanthropy, more than 150,000 Jewish-themed books have been distributed to families with young children throughout the greater Palm Beaches. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> There is so much more I can say about Dorothy. She is 100. That's, that's a lot of things to say. But we don't have time for that. Um, so Dorothy, we want to present you with a small token of appreciation to you in honor of your 100th birthday. And no birthday is complete without a cake. So if you can all please join me in singing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Dorothy, happy birthday to you. What can I say but thank you to all of you. All of you have played such an important part in this federation, and my heart goes out to you. It has been my wonderful experience that has created this, and of course the people that I have met and loved throughout my to see 30, 40 years that I have been active in Federation. It has been the best thing that has happened to me besides my husband and my children. And I really, really feel that all of you can share in this thing with me. So thank you, thank you, and thank you. Dorothy, we all love you deeply, so thank you. So thank you all. Uh, we appreciate you coming out tonight. It's almost 300 of you. Um, in an effort to not overwhelm our, our valet, please stay, have a piece of cake, have some desserts. Um, but thank you again for coming, and thank you for what has been an extraordinarily successful year for our Federation. Good night. <laughs>